Hey, good morning, guys. It's Stephanie. It is Saturday. It's May 21st. Yeah. So, anyways, this morning I was up at 7.30. Got cleaned up. Last night I had a nice long shower. Washed my hair. My hair is curly and all fluffy because I left a lot of the condition, uh, the uh, conditioner back in my hair. I didn't rinse it all out. When you do that, the hair gets curly and it gets tighter and it pulls itself up and fluffy. So that's how I got to make this look like this. So I slept very well. Um, I've been following very closely the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard uh, defamation uh, lawsuit. It's very interesting, very intriguing. And uh, I watched a little bit yesterday. But when I came home, I was so exhausted. I worked my part-time job, as you guys know. And uh, after my shower, I went right to bed. <laughs> I slept decent. Not the best, but definitely not the worst. So um, today, I want to talk about my feeling towards my family being a trans woman and what I have sensed has happened. And just when you think you have people in your corner, you discover that they were never in your corner. So I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and also to uh, those people who may just be visiting my channel for the first time. If you see something that resonates with you, please hit that subscribe button. I appreciate it very, very much. Um, don't forget to hit that top bell so you get future notifications. I'll be right back with more. So anyways, this morning, there's a few things I want to do. I have to drive to my eye doctor's uh, location over here where I get my prescription glasses. And I, I bought new frame uh, because my insurance uh, will, will pay for a new frame new lenses or new contacts once a year so last year I didn't buy any new glasses last year so this year I'm gonna take advantage of it um, they're really a nice frame they're not round like my other ones um, it's they're by coach and they're about $300 for, the, for, for just a frame so with the polyurethane lenses and it being transitional lens um, out of pocket it would have cost me about eight hundred dollars <laughs> but uh, out of pocket it cost me about 45 bucks um, I didn't bother having an eye exam to get the glasses because I'm undergoing um, retina care as you guys may know and uh, yeah I'm just gonna go find out when they open and at some point today maybe in the way back towards this part of the city I'll stop there and get it so I was saying that just when you thought 
that you have certain people in your family as a supporter, you find out along the way by talking to other members of the family that they may not be as supportive as you, you have thought. I tend to be a little bit of a drama queen when it comes to talking about family situations. But everybody has family situations, okay? Everybody. No family's perfect. However, when you throw being a transsexual woman in a family situation, it gets that much more amplified. We've all heard the word uh, love unconditionally. I love unconditionally, but they don't unconditionally love me. They may act like it in front of me or talk, talk like they do in front of me, but what are they saying about me or how are they acting behind my back? Because that's just as equal intensity, if not more harming. Because if, if in your presence, they're behaving like they love you and they support you, but when you leave their presence, they're not doing that with others, then they don't really love you or support you anymore, okay? And this is what I'm discovering now. As you know, every, say, every few years, I would fly up to Massachusetts regardless to visit my family. So I thought that my family would always be there for me. As you know from my prior conversation, they haven't, they haven't. They weren't supportive of any surgery I had. They weren't by my bedside of any hospital where I stayed at, nothing like that. But yet they hold me accountable to giving up my livelihood here, relocate, quit my job, sell my home to go up there and care for them. I feel like I'm just being used. For years upon years upon years, within 20 years, I've been asking my parents to come down here and visit me and spend some time here with me because they may like the area. Well, you know, my parents have gone on with their age, but it's no excuse because they fly every year to Europe. Getting on with their age has nothing to do with it. That's the excuse that some people use for me. Um, so my brother is the, has the power of attorney over them in their will. Currently, he's in possession of their bank accounts and has control of their finances. Whenever they need something, they go to him, okay? He takes care, supposedly, of all their welfare. That includes finances, paying their utility bills, paying their, um, their housing cost. What I'm trying to get at is, for the past years and years and years, I've been telling my parents to come here and spend their time with me. They've come up with every excuse in the book for the past 20 years, and they have not set foot in Florida. Well, as you know, my aunt just passed away several weeks ago, and I'm still dealing with the residual hurt from that but what that caused also was 
it caused me and my cousins to, to some extent, communicate a little bit. While at my aunt's bedside, while she was holding on to her life in hospice, I had conversations with my cousin. And he told me that he's been trying to get my, my parents to come down here as well, but he doesn't come down, but they don't come down. They almost came down, but they didn't. At least he got an almost. I didn't even get that. But in the process of talking to my cousin, I find out that he had a conversation with my brother, Alan. He's the one that's got power of attorney over my parents and their finances. He, he had a conversation with my brother and he asked my brother that if they could get my parents to visit Florida, my cousin John asked him if he was able to book their flights. And my brother said yes, that he would book their flights to come down. You know what the problem I see with all this? For the past few years, I've been practically begging my parents to come down here and my brother to come down here with my parents. And they haven't for the past 20 years. Okay. The last conversation I had with my brother was when I got back from visiting them, my brother asked me, have you considered booking, your, booking a flight for them? You see? When my cousin asked him if he can book a flight for them to come down, he said yes. But when I ask, he tells me to book a flight for them. He tells me to book a flight. Have I thought about booking a flight for them? Why didn't he tell my cousin the same thing? Why? What's going on here? After all, he's got the finances that's theirs. He's controlling their checking account and their savings. Why doesn't he book the flight? Okay. They fly every year to Europe and it costs them seven thousand dollars for 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 a trip back. That's one way trip. It's not a two way trip. Each time you go one way, it's seven thousand dollars to go to Europe near Africa. Okay? Why doesn't he book their flight? So with me, it's, I have to book the flight if I want them to come down here. They wouldn't come anyway, not to see me. I'm just not good enough. That disparity and that decision, and, he, and with that decision, him siding with my cousin, that he could help that he could book the flight tells me a lot. My brother has been leading me on, causing me to think that he's a supporter. He's not my supporter. There are underlying reasons why he supports my cousin and supports helping my parents to come down here, but he wouldn't help me. How revealing. These are things that's happening behind my back. To my face, he supports me. On the phone, he talks like he supports me. But behind my back, he really isn't. Okay? That's a sign that there's a lot more said and a lot more being done that I know. That's why two weeks ago I just cut them off I had to cut them off okay they can no, they can no longer contact me 
for any reason because th I don't call this a healthy relationship. I don't call this a healthy, loving, supportive relationship. Okay? Because if it was, it would have been even keel, treat everybody the same. I'm not treated the same. Okay? I also block my parents because they're toxic. Okay? And also because they have never supported me. Okay? I have a soft heart. I think to myself, well, if they're blocked on the phone, how can anybody contact you to let you know if they're in the hospital or if something happened? Why should I care? When I was laid up in the hospital from surgeries, how many family members came to visit me? How many people called me? They didn't even call me to ask me how I was doing. I was laid out in a coma for three or four days after my surgeries, after my bottom surgery. Nobody called me. Nobody came to visit me. I had four total surgeries done to me physically, my face, my top, my bottom, an entire facial feminization including chipping away at my skull and polishing down my every bone in my face to get rid of the male masculinity. That was a nine hour surgery. Nobody came to see me. As a matter of fact, they ignored me for seven years. So what do I care if they can't contact me after I block them? I feel like I'm their punching bag. I feel like I'm only in this world to serve. Well, not anymore. I'm not. I'm not. If a lot of you transcestors out there are struggling with the same thing that I'm just now concluding and putting behind me and moving forward, don't hang on to family or friends who don't truly support you and love you, okay? Because if you keep chasing and calling and going to them and being around them, when you don't sense there's no love, you need to back off, give them a permanent space and live your life because time is just so fucking precious. It's too precious, okay? For those of you who have all your families, that's wonderful. That's wonderful, I applaud you. But many of us do not. Many of us do not. I hope you guys can take away something from this because it's real, it's real, okay? A lot of trans girls and trans men have totally no support from their from their family. It's no reason to feel suicidal. Maybe you could use some assistance from a therapist to help you cope. But if you can cope with forging your new life to move forward and be productive and happy once again, do it. If not, get some help with it. I hope to talk with you guys again very, very soon. Love you guys.